Howdy partners. So, getting this sick soil out of the greenhouse. And what I plan to do is put it outside so it can weather a bit. And tonight, the snowfall is supposed to begin. And next week is gonna be minus nine. And I thought that might be a good way of killing some of the pathogens, cleaning out the soil a bit, leaving it outside on the same principle as how they plough fields and let the frost and, and weather wash all the crap out of it. So it's going to be quite a boring job, but it's got to be done. And because I didn't think I made this door too small for the wheelbarrow so I've just taken the door off for now and to allow me to easily get this bucket out and just basically digging now for a bit you think you you build a greenhouse and you think everything's going to be under control in there you think and I'll be able to grow all my stuff in there in a little uh, hermetically sealed box. But that's the problem. Life doesn't like to be separated from the world outside. And once you start making a little box with uh, your controlled atmosphere, your controlled uh, world, then a whole host of other problems pop up like pathogens and the soil not naturally replenishing itself so there's always an upside and a downside to whatever you do we see it in everything that uh, men try to make that humans try to make for example like Everyone wants to drive around in cars, so eventually everyone's driving around in metal boxes and not getting anywhere any faster than they were 100 years ago with a horse. It's like every enterprise contains uh, seeds of its own downfall. We try and cure diseases in Africa for example little place, little village 500 people have all got malaria and then the missionaries come in give those 500 people in the village some malaria tablets everyone gets better and in 20 years the village has got 20,000 people living there but uh, no one's got malaria but everyone's starving because the the area can't support that many people and in a way the malaria kept the levels of people to a manageable problem so mankind's trying to do good by getting rid of the malaria but you end up with 20,000 people suffering from starvation. And if you just think about the um, amount of suffering, human suffering, then by giving out those malaria tablets, the net suffering has increased. So that's just one of those funny rules that whenever you start messing with stuff, often gets worse even though you're trying to improve it. Or you could say you don't get out for note, which is true as well. It's amazing how much soil is in here, even though it's just a little place. You can see roots in there, all sorts of stuff. I don't know where that's come from. This could be an even bigger job than I think. Maybe it'd be better to dig right down 
and seal the bottom of the greenhouse from outside. But that's one thing that might lead to more problems because then it will even be more sealed off from the rail world. And I thought a bit of goodness might come up through the ground, but it doesn't seem to be the case. The only thing that's coming up through the ground is ants and roots. But it seems funny that uh, I was just watching Dan's channel the other day and in a way that's what I've been planning to do this for a long time but Dan kind of spurred me on to doing it because his greenhouse, his onions are getting a bit tired with the soil gone dodgy and so I did it but it's not just Dan, it's uh, my mate Yoshi who's got a greenhouse he's found as well this year his soil has reached tipping point or whatever you want to call it, the soil's just gone bad and he's doing exactly the same with his greenhouse this year and maybe it's something to do with us well, last winter where we had no frost really to kill off some of the the beasties So the pile's already quite big and I've hardly taken any out. I don't know what these roots are growing in here, where they come from. I'm nicking all the uh, nutrients as well. So I should have done this last year really, because the uh, I could see the quality of the plants going down last year. And, like I said, I knew in the heart of hearts that something was wrong. So, you know, this, when you build a greenhouse, you think that's it. But, like everything else, it's a kind of entropy working. And if you don't put the energy in, then everything will resort back to a kind of chaos and not as you want it so I purposefully didn't fix these stones in permanently because uh, well I knew something like this might happen in my deep down so we'll just take these stones out as well leave them outside for, for the winter to get a nice cleaning as well So I'm wondering if I should leave this door off for uh, this cold snap that was coming along and just let uh, loads of air come in there and get let it get really below freezing in here. Now we'll see. <coughs> now I'll get this lot out now. Looks tiny but Still a fair amount of soil in there. Bone dry. Right, time for an egg sandwich and a cup of tea. See you later. So as you can see, it's piling up, isn't it? So, most of it out now. Down to the foundations almost. You know that saying, Nature abhors a vacuum. Well, as the garden and the greenhouse is kind of like a, a macrocosm of life. And if you take your greenhouse, for example, and 
you're making this kind of shut off world and I think it's like a lot of those ancient Greek stories uh, is it Hercules who if he doesn't have contact with the earth with his, with his feet he loses all the energy that goes up into his body and I guess the same thing is with the greenhouse because uh, because you're cutting it off from the um, the world, the natural world, where in winter time the ground gets washed out and pests get killed from the frost, but that don't happen in the greenhouse. So then you start getting problems. Just as Hercules could not carry the world anymore when his feet were off the ground and I think I can't remember how the story goes but somebody lifted him off the ground for a while to so he'd lose his power and that's the same thing with a, a greenhouse I think so what I'm attempting to do is restore Hercules foot to the ground and put this soil outside to try and so it gets a bit of um, soil food or whatever you want to call it. And I've just had a cup of tea and an egg sandwich and a quick look at the weather for next week and now they've updated it and it's going down to minus 16 next week so that should be good to kill any uh, any stuff in the soil. As I was saying about nature abhors a vacuum and the garden being a, a kind of a, a world in miniature, a microcosm of the world, makes you wonder about, you know, like men moving into cities away from the land and we're getting uh, we get all the problems we've got the advantages of the cities where everyone can get food easily transported in and people move around quickly and communication and all the plus points of living in a city but then you get all the minus points and you know if a city gets too far away from its roots then Perverse things start happening, I guess. So, just about down to ground zero now. Back to the original earth that the ground greenhouse was built on. Now, I'm open to suggestions here because I ain't got a clue what I'm doing really, I'm no market gardener. But I was wondering, would it be worth putting leaves and old compost in here to compost down and then afterwards next year put the fresh soil on top of that so it's got a kind of a base or will that just bring more pests in? I've looked quite a lot on the internet of about sick soil and there's so much information there you can't hardly sift through it. But um, I read in commercial greenhouses every now and then they go in and lay steam pipes everywhere and just steam the earth, you know, and sterilise all the earth that way. Which, uh, which just sounds like a big move, doesn't it? A lot of energy involved. So let's hope this idea of putting the stuff outside. But anyone who's got any ideas, because I know you're all a, a brilliant team out there and there's lots of information to be had. And if anyone has got any suggestions, they will all be taken up most gratefully. Scraped out to ground zero. And I'm not sure yet. I've had enough for today anyway, because I don't want to do my back in. But uh, whether to take out another foot or something and think about it. Any comments, any ideas what to do would be good. 
I'll just get fresh soil just to have a look out here and you can see that's what I've dug out quite a pile isn't it it's all the sacks of compost that have been bought over the last five years so I'll just leave that and let all these minus temperatures and rain wash through that and hopefully clean it out a bit and we'll see how it looks later on and I'm not sure if I after the uh, frost when it's not frosty whether to cover it up or not but no I think I'll just leave it to weather another thing I might do as well is dig this bank out here along there so I can get round there with a the wheelbarrow because it's a bit of a pain there. I just need to cut that off there and then I better get to the door with the wheelbarrow so that'll do me for today digging anyway yeah I think there really is some in that uh, that thing about um, microcosms and gardens it's like war really you've always in a war against other life forms who want to have that garden for their territory and you say I want it as my territory so you know your garden's like Shakespeare play really you've got uh, your plants and your insects and all the sex that goes on pollination you've got your semis exercise and then you've got your warfare side when you're fighting against uh, weeds and pests so that's your classic war thing and then you've got your your romantic bit when you've got a lovely garden and it's all finished and it's no wonder that uh, in the Bible it was the Garden of Eden really if you think about it and I don't know there must be a message somewhere when they get kicked out of the Garden of Eden maybe that's when you do lose touch with nature and that's when problems start because uh, you're trying to control something that's absolutely uh, complicated and beyond your comprehension and as soon as you start trying, trying to control it then uh, strange things start to happen, unexpected things so uh, I think that's doesn't make any sense, possibly does, I don't know just talking about online stuff in general, YouTube, the community and I think it's really good the uh, little gardening community that's going on in YouTube uh, I don't know if these little sub communities grow up everywhere in YouTube but I know the little sub community that I'm a part of and uh, you, you, you know who you are if you're in that sub community and it's a great community, it's a, a fantastic and uh, makes gardening more interesting when there's a it's kind of like a group of people who meet down the pub and talk about the gardens and just such a great bunch on YouTube that uh, this little sub community is fantastic I really like it and um, I wonder if there's other communities like that on YouTube with different subjects but our one's been around for about I'd say about six or seven years now and uh, lots of nice guys on there and uh, may it, long may it prosper whatever Spock does <laughs> so I'm thinking of just leaving this door off and the flap open while this cold stormy weather comes maybe the flap no just so some nice cold air and wet cold air can come in here and neutralize the situation a bit and all the cats can come in and shit in here which they will do on this pile of soil out here now So that's it for now. Ooh, 
getting rough. Snow is supposed to start tonight, so looking forward to that like a little kid. So next time I see you all, it'll be all white and snowy. Have a great day.